Hi, I'm Drew with WildMe. I'm the lead developer on Flukebook, and today I'll be showing you how to run automated fluke matching using our system. So the very short version of it is that once your data is on Flukebook, on say an encounter page like this one, you simply find the photo that you want to match, and you click this little menu here at the bottom right of the photo, and choose Start Matching. So that's the short version, but I'll be showing the whole process in a bit more detail for the rest of this video. So let's go back to the home page here. And for the video, we're going to assume that your data is already on Flukebook. If you have new photos that you want to match against the Flukebook catalog, your first step will be to submit that data. So if you have a single encounter or sighting, you would want to use the Report and Encounter option under our Submit tab here. But if you have a large amount of structured data, it's better to use our bulk importer, and that's available here. Again, for this video, we'll assume all the data you want is already on Flukebook. So one common use of matching in this scenario is that you want to cross-validate the computer vision matcher with the historical manual matching that your researchers have done themselves. So the first thing we'll do is find some of that historical data. And I'll do that using our search function. So, very important, first, you need to log in on Flukebook. Now that I'm logged in, I'll do a search. You could search for encounters, individuals, or sightings, depending on what you're most comfortable with. I like to use the individual search, because for this purpose, I'm just looking for an individual that has a lot of photos, so I can validate the computer matching. Here's our search page. Most of our search pages look pretty similar. At the top, you have a map where you could outline an area on the map to search for, and then underneath that, we have all sorts of options to filter on pretty much any field of data that's stored on Flukebook. For example, you could select which user owns the data and search on that, of course, depending on your security permissions. You could search by the individual IDs, the nicknames, whatever you want. I find it most intuitive and quickest to just search on the map myself, so that's what I'll be doing. So let's try to get some data from the Arabian Sea population. I'll click this icon here on the top left to draw my box, and here's my map region I'll be searching through. All right, and you can select more than one criteria and they'll stack, but I'll just do this one search option for now. And here's the search results. So there's 148 individuals, as we can see, that were returned. And uh, since I'm logged in as the admin, I'm seeing all of the data here. It's possible some of these individuals were not from the Arabian Sea Whale Network data. So that's for any ASWN viewers who might be wondering about that 148 number. But anyway, here's all the individuals on Flukebook who returned. And I'm going to sort these results by the number of encounters. Like I said, I want to find an individual that has a bunch of encounters and a bunch of photos so we can see how the computer vision is working. Now that I've sorted by encounters, you can see our best options here. Uh, one of my favorite whales we have is Saddle, so I'm going to go with Saddle. We've clicked uh, Saddle's entry on that results table, and now we're on Saddle's individual Flukebook profile. So here at the top, you can see some of uh, Saddle's profile pictures. Those are the best ones, as labeled by researchers. Um, you can scroll down, see other info about Saddle, for example, uh, Saddle's co-occurrences. We can see it's co-occurred with uh, this whale more often than any other. Keep scrolling, we see Saddle's encounters table. These are all the different records we have, uh, encounters with Saddle. You can see this column here, the third column from the left, highlights what type of data was collected uh, for each encounter. For example, photos or biopsies are those two icons. So what we want to do now is find a good photo of Saddle that we can submit to computer vision so we can see how it does. So one way I could do that is by clicking through these encounters with the photo icons. But something that's even easier is when you go all the way to the top here, back to this nice little gallery, here's the view all images option. I'm going to click that. And now we're on a page showing all of the images we have of Saddle, not just his profile photos. So there's a lot of really nice pictures here. You could just scroll through and appreciate these for a while if you want. That's what I do sometimes. But instead, I'm going to look for one that's especially clear and crisp. Computers are like humans. They like image quality. The clearer the image, the easier to match. So let's see. 
why don't we try this one? That's a pretty iconic photo. I think that's the profile picture too. Oh, look at that, it is. Quick aside, using this menu on the top left, you can change your keywords. You could add or remove the profile photo keyword if you, uh, you know, deemed some pictures were worthier than others, or label which part of the animal is being photographed. But anyway, just as I mentioned earlier, uh, at the start of the video, the way you kick off matching is with this menu on the bottom right. We call that a hamburger menu because it looks like a little hamburger. So click that and now start matching. Aha, pop-up blocked. That's a tricky thing. You always have to allow pop-ups from flukebook.org. Some browsers, Chrome especially, will be overzealous in blocking them. So now that I've allowed pop-ups, I can fully start matching. And here we are. We're waiting for results from Saddle. Matching usually takes about five minutes, so just like on a cooking show, I have one ready fresh out the oven over here. So here's another encounter with Saddle I had open earlier, and this match was started from even a third encounter. You can tell that that's a different uh, fluke photo of Saddles than what we had just selected. But this is the Computer Vision Matching Results page. Uh, this is what you get once the results have come back from our computer vision server. One of the first things you notice is that we have three different results on this page. That's because right now Flukebook uses three different computer vision algorithms. And since these algorithms focus on different parts of the photo or the animal um, and process the information in different ways, it's fruitful to actually keep the results separate. That's because sometimes you learn things from how the algorithms disagree with each other, as I think we're about to find out here. So scrolling through, you can see all three algorithms got the correct match. That's really cool. You can see that visually, these are the same individuals. You can just tell as a human. And then you can see up here in the table, that it has the same ID already in Flukebook. That's Saddle's OM00003 we see. So we scroll down. Oh, first of all, uh, this top result here is pattern matching. That's labeled right here. This is the pattern matching result. We only got one photo. That means that the other photos in the database weren't a strong enough match to be returned by the computer vision server. Scrolling down to our second result here, again, we're matched to saddle. Here we found a couple different photos of saddles that matched uh, to this one. Oh, look, there's that iconic profile photo. And as you scroll over these photos, the candidates will appear on the right. This lets you do side-by-side -side comparisons real easily. And you can see all of these are incorrect, but the server returns them so that the researcher can consider the options. Again, these top two results were saddle, that's great. And this was with our trailing edge algorithm. This one's called dynamic time warping. That's that DTW right there. And as you can see, the trailing edge algorithm uh, got different photos than the pattern matching algorithm. I think that's pretty cool. It illustrates how these algorithms really do work off of different information. And we actually have a third algorithm, which is also trailing edge, just like dynamic time warping. This one's called curve rank. It's our latest algorithm. Um, we're still seeing how effective it is. And all of our early indications are that, yes, it's very effective. For example, here, again, we get a positive match. And what I think is super cool is how you can see that the match on the trailing edge here was crucial, because in this photo, all the other parts of the fluke are underwater, including part of the trailing edge. But there was still enough of the trailing edge available for curve rank to make the positive match. So, since we're just trying to validate our historical matching, we're basically done here. There's no more uh, editing to the database that needs to be done with this match. You can see all these photos are already labeled saddle. And when I check them using this checkbox, you can see as it says up here, they have the same individual ID. So there's noth nothing uh, further that needs to be done. Now what if we saw a new match here, one that wasn't already in our data? Well, that's very simple. You highlight the match uh, that you think looks correct, check this checkbox, and then you can use a dialog uh, to assign the individual up here. And that appears whenever uh, one of the photos doesn't already have an individual assigned to it. 
So if you uh, get a new photo uh, from an opportunistic ID, you submit it to Flukebook, it would be on this page using this checkbox that you use these computer vision results to actually update the database, say, oh yes, this is a new photo of Saddle, or this is a new photo of Half Moon, whoever it might be. All right, so I'd say this was a successful test. We see that computer vision has agreed with our historical catalog, and we can see how the three matching algorithms work using different information. Thanks a lot. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, never hesitate to contact me. Bye.